Hey guys, what's up? So this is the top 10 programming languages to learn in 2017, and yes, it is finally 2017. So I actually did this video about six months ago where I was trying to project what I thought was going to be the top languages in 2017. And um, looking back on it, I, I, I have now changed that. Um, there were a few items on there. Um, number one was TypeScript, and uh, I really don't think that it deserves a place in the top 10 um, after dealing with it a little bit more. Um, so I just went ahead and I want, I want to update this um, this video to just reflect where I am on uh, 2017 in the languages. And just so you know that there is no definitive like math or algorithm or anything like that that you can use to try to project like what are the 10 best languages. This is mostly um, you know what I feel are the top languages to learn for opportunity, for frameworks, and just for building things. Um, so I think it covers a relatively wide area of development and not just web development, but um, my expertise is primarily in web development. So let me go ahead and get started. So number 10 is Ruby. Ruby is a dynamic language. It's object uh, oriented. It was um, developed really uh, in the 1990s, but the, um, it wasn't until the advent of like Ruby on Rails, the web framework that Ruby got very, very popular. But and one of the reasons why Ruby barely makes this list is that it is still somewhat of a one-trick pony. I mean, people are using Ruby for Ruby on Rails, and uh, and Rails has had some of its um, its market share get eaten into by uh, things like Node.js and Python Django and other things. So um, Ruby, unfortunately, is not you know it barely makes this list just simply because uh, it's just not used in enough areas. I, I don't think um, in 2017 and going forward. Um, but it is still a very relevant language, so that's why I think it, it definitely deserves its spot in the top ten. Number nine is C. Um, so C is uh, obviously the, the the grandfather of all these languages that are going to be on this list. Um, so C is, um, and some people some people consider it a low level language. It's really not a low level in the sense of like assembly, but it's it's lower than um, you know higher level languages like Python and uh, and C sharp and things like that. But uh, C is. Um, you know, the, the language that a lot of these other languages are written on top of, which is includes Ruby and Python and C Sharp. And, uh, so knowing C um, is going to be able to give you a lot of understanding of how programming works. Uh, but at the same time, we are kind of replacing a lot of you know, the old school C code with a lot of these higher level languages. So you don't necessarily have to write C. Um, but there are going to be a lot of jobs and opportunities, especially for uh, embedded systems like um, the system that was on the Mars Curiosity rover was written in C. I believe it was like 500,000 lines of C code instead of using anything like Java or C Sharp or uh, any of that stuff because it does have overhead compared to just writing raw C. So um, C definitely makes the list at number nine here. Number eight is PHP. It's a server-side scripting language. Um, so this was a language that wasn't really designed with like um, you know best practices in mind for the most part. It was actually to get things done. So you know, getting S done in, uh, in 1994 was really the motto, I would say, of PHP because as we've grown, or as the language has grown, like, things get tacked on and sometimes you kind of look at it and you're like, well, I, that, you know, that's kind of weird the way they tack that on. But um, the, the point is, though, is PHP still runs um, the majority of websites out there. So they have the, the largest market share of any server-side language um, for all websites out there. So there's, um, as much as people hate, you know, hate on PHP, there's still a lot of opportunity there. Uh, especially for indie developers and just getting websites up and running. Uh, most web hosts work with PHP where you know you might struggle a little bit to find them for some of the other other languages listed, but <clears throat> PHP definitely deserves a top 10 spot. Number seven is Swift, and uh, I have Swift here instead of object, uh, Objective-C, uh, but really Objective-C could also be used uh, um, side by side with Swift here because they're both Apple-based languages that are you know, designed to to solve Apple problems, and um, obviously Apple has a huge amount of market share in a lot of different arenas. So, um, if you're an Apple developer, then Swift or Objective C is going to be for you. Uh, but I mentioned Swift because Swift is like their you know Apple's newest language that they've introduced. Number six is uh, C plus plus, and um, C plus plus has been around for a long time since the 1980s. It's object oriented. Um, it's very fast and you have to deal with memory management and things like that so um, it's going to be faster than other compiled languages like C Sharp or Java and it's still used widely in games and 3D applications and things like that so anywhere you have process intensive stuff a lot of C++ is still being used and it's really not going anywhere it's also the language of choice for the Unreal game engine 
So C++ is definitely a popular option in 2017. Number five is Go, and Go is actually number five on this list because it's growing so quickly. Um, the, the, in years past, like it seemed like it took a, a little while for this to actually uh, catch on, but in the last couple of years, I've seen Go grow uh, by a tr pretty tremendous amount, and really it's because of the influence that Google has. Um, Google hired these guys to develop the Go language, and, um, and Go, uh, well, Google's original stack goes back to Python, and then a lot of their process-intensive stuff, they, they switched over to C++. Go was created so that they could solve a lot of their, um, you know, their hardware, like being able to be fast and, and concurrent. Um, and Go was built with that in mind, so it makes it easier to develop fast and concurrent based applications over something like Python and C++. So, you know, with the influence that Go uh, and Google has, um, it, it has continued to grow. And, and really, the top 10, I think this is going to be the most surprising list of all of them. So C Sharp is uh, number four here. Microsoft's been doing a lot of uh, good things in the developer community. They've open sourced a lot of their technology. They created Visual Studio Code, which is one of the best text editors out there right now. It's definitely better than Atom, uh, in my opinion. And, um, and they're continuing to grow. So uh, Azure can now host um, Node, Node applications. It can host uh, Django and Python and other things that typically you know, Microsoft just kind of focused on their own thing. Another thing is their .NET Core ecosystem is now open source and available. Uh, cross platform so they're not just a Microsoft only uh, technology or language. And finally, they also bought Xamarin, um, which allows you to do mobile development in C Sharp. So that's why C Sharp is all the way at number four on this list. Number three is Java. Um, Java has been the king of all languages and it still probably has arguably the most jobs of any language on this list. Um, but Java is going to be the server side stack for a lot of different languages. There's other uh, things that are written on the Java virtual machine. Um, you have things like solar, um, index-based searching. Um, you have uh, all kinds of different applications. A lot of APIs are written in Java. Uh, a lot of actual applications, including games and software, is also written in Java. Um, so it is definitely highly uh, regarded and high up on this list. Number two is Python. But Python has been growing so tremendously over the last, like, really 10 years, um, and, and Python goes all the way back to like 1990, so um, it wasn't until really Google and IBM started picking up uh, Python in the 90s that it really became like a, a household name, but um, ultimately ended up replacing a lot of what Perl did really well, because Python was much easier and much easier to read than, than Perl, and a lot of what Perl did really good, Python did just as well, or at least close enough to just as well. Uh, that people just kind of flocked over to Python. So, as far as network administrators and things like that, Python still has its you know it has its place there. Um, but it's grown a lot in like machine learning uh, and data sciences. It's also very popular in web nowadays with like Python and Django. Sites like Instagram and Reddit are all on Python. Um, so, another thing too is it's relatively cheap to host. It's cross-platform. So, Python is is a very very popular language. And the reason why it's so high on this list is because Newbie developers like Python really more than any other language that I've seen. So I've had hundreds of thousands, really millions of views on this channel, and some of my most um, and some of those newbie developers, you know, they they flock and they love Python. So you know, if if, if you know the, the the modern coming of age programmers are flocking to Python, that means it's going to have its place in the future. So you know, we're seeing all kinds of startups using Python. Um, so some people will say, well, it's not a compiled language. It's not as fast as some of these other languages. It's not, you know, it's duct typed and all this other stuff. But the, the Python can get the job done in so many different cases um, that it's going to, it's just, it's extremely popular. You're not going to write a game engine in Python, but once again, every language has its own uh, purpose and need. And, and Python just uh, is good enough for so many different areas that it makes it high up on this list. Number one is JavaScript. Now, this is mostly based off of, uh, you know, web development and also now mobile development because there's things like React Native that allows you to write mobile applications using JavaScript. Uh, there's also the server-side technology, which is Node.js, which allows you to write server-side language in, in JavaScript. And then uh, JavaScript has been predominantly, you know, obviously just used in a browser as a browser-based language. Uh, but it's the only language that that's supported by all major browsers out there. So if you want to build a uh, an application, whether it's a software as a service or a game or something in the web, 
Um, JavaScript allows you to write it in one way that works across different browsers. Now, of course, some browsers uh, interpret JavaScript a little bit differently, um, and, and those can deal with some headaches, but that's going to be with any sort of language. But the, the point is, though, is that JavaScript is so tremendously popular because everything is done on the web now uh, that there's just no question that JavaScript is the most popular language and really has the most opportunity, I would say, at this point. Uh, because any sort of web development gig, you need to have JavaScript. And most of the jobs out there are in web development in some way, shape, or form. So anyway, guys, this is the updated uh, top 10 programming languages to learn in 2017. This is the best guide to go off of. Don't deal with what you know, my competitors are telling you because um, they all just copy off me. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But guys, this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. And they are a 12 and 16 week um, boot camp that is designed to get your foot in the door in the industry uh, as quickly as possible. And um, they're, they're based out of Provo, Utah, but they have courses in Dallas, Texas, and also in uh, Salt Lake City. And they're continuing to grow. They're adding new curriculum all the time. They're focusing on things like Node.js, uh, Angular, and React, um, things that companies are using right now. And by focusing um, on these, you know, these specific areas, their, whole, their intention is to get you in the door to these development companies in order to be able to um, you know, get brought in as a, as a junior developer to start learning the, the skills and the ropes and, and really have enough to compete with senior developers that may not be as experienced in some of these newer technologies and things. So um, definitely check out Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp. Uh, they're one of the top rated boot camps out there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and upvote and share. Thank you. Bye.